Yeah. I want to talk about building for the future. Uh, you can begin today with building towards the future. It's very important that we have a plan and that we execute the plan. This is the time uh, that, that God is making some changes and, and we need to know what he's doing. This is what I heard him say this morning that the next three months are going to be critical uh, for your life and for my life. And so I want to talk about uh, Genesis 17. That's where we're going to start. And I just tell the story about it. It's about Abraham and, and Sarah. And uh, God came, came to them and told them that they were going to have a son in one year. Okay, so uh, this is a very important, and, and I believe this is the most critical three-month period in, in the history of mankind. That up until now, Abraham and Sarah, uh, of course, their names weren't, were Abram and and Sarah, until this time, but this is the uh, chapter in Genesis chapter 17, where God changed their name to Abraham and to Sarah. Abraham meaning a father of many nations, and Sarah meaning a mother of many nations. Uh, what was uh, important here is that God uh, has a covenant that he's making with uh, Abraham, and it's the covenant of circumcision. Now, it's a relationship, and so th this uh, message is about a relationship and a relationship with God, and uh, what we see here is that for many years, Abraham has followed the Lord, and he has been loyal uh, to the Lord. It's not like he went out and served a bunch of other uh, idols, uh, but he was loyal over this period uh, to, to follow the Lord, uh, but I'm really talking about something more than just loyalty, bringing things up to a higher level, a level of commitment. So it's one thing that we can be loyal and that, that says, well, we're going to be faithful and we're not going to serve other gods, uh, but uh, we'll serve as it uh, pleases us and when we like to serve and, and as long as we would like to serve. But, but now God is speaking to all of us to move it up to a higher level, and that's the level of commitment, mm. unreserved commitment. Uh, Abraham, see, for the uh, for several years, uh, had been following God, but yet he had been up and he had been down, and he had been in and he had been out. God said, uh, "Leave your uh, family and come follow me, and I'll show you where I want you to go." And uh, Abraham. Uh, of course, at that time, was his name was still Abram, and he took his father, and he took his lot, so he, uh, his nephew Lot, so he, he did away with uh, some of the uh, worst of his family, but he kept uh, <laughs> some back uh, that he wanted to keep close to him, and, and so he, he didn't uh, completely follow the Lord. He didn't have that full commitment to God uh, in those early years, but he was, he was loyal to him. And, it's not that he served other gods, okay? But then uh, he spent some time down in Egypt, and and he told uh, the the people down there that uh, uh, that Sarah was his uh, sister. Well, I, I guess they were kissing cousins. They were cousins, but <laughs> but God said you're going to have a child, uh, and uh, and yet uh, Abram was going to let her go with whoever wanted her at the time, rather than. Uh, lay down his life uh, in unreserved commitment. And so that happened with Abimelech. And, and so uh, Abram was in and out and up and down, wishy-washy. Mm -hmm. What we say, wishy-washy. Oh, goodness. Uh, okay. And, and uh, then uh, the child that God had promised him didn't come along right away. And so, uh, so uh, he and uh, Sarah came up with a new plan, and that was to have <laughs> Hagar, a slave, and have a child for Abram to have a child with, with her. But we know that all of that wishy-washy mm. behavior that he had for all of those years 
was about to change when he was 99 and in Genesis 17, mm. and God said, now I want you to be blameless before me. Woo! It's one thing to be wishy and washy and in and out, but now he's, a, he's calling us to a higher standard. And I believe he's calling all of, us, all of us, that includes you and me, to a higher standard, a standard of commitment, a full commitment, unreserved commitment. Mm -hmm. And now we've got to be blameless and walk blameless before God. It was one thing to uh, just uh, uh, take our time and enjoy life, but we're not at that stage anymore. It's time we need to be serious with God. And so at this point, uh, he said, be uh, blameless. And he gave him a covenant of circumcision. Now, circumcision is going to cut the flesh away. And this is the higher level of commitment. Oh, wow, this wow. is an unreserved commitment uh, because on that day that, I, that uh, God said, you're going to have a child, you and Sarah are going to have a child, not, not you and a slave woman, but you and Sarah are going to have a child. And both Sarah and Abraham laughed at it. And, and you might say, oh, that's a laugh of faith, but I believe that's a laugh of mm -hmm. skepticism. Mm -hmm. Uh, that they weren't there yet, but God was given them three months. And let me explain the three months because he said in a year, you will have a child. And so everything uh, in eternity is pivotal at this point. And in three months, he was going to have to be intimate with Sarah. And she had to take the seed at that point and carry, uh, be pregnant and carry the baby for nine months. So it was this Three month period that I'm oh, talking wow. about. You've got three months to get your uh, oh, life together. Oh, and wow. you and your wife come together in unity in these three months. The day is January the 23rd, and in three months is April the 23rd. And I believe that God has uh, something in store for each of us in the three months. And now it's the today's the time to make the decision mm -hmm. to move to the higher standard. Oh, because you yeah. see, on this very same day that God appeared uh, to Abraham called, and Abram and changed his name to Abraham, on that very same day he was circumcised in his flesh, and all of his household, all of the males, or whether they were born in his household or whether they were slaves. Uh, born in his household, or whether they, they were slaves purchased with money, they were all circumcised this very same day, because Abraham had to get it together. He had three months to get it together. Maybe uh, he and Sarah, and I, I can understand this, maybe he and Sarah hadn't even been, uh, had relationships or hadn't been intimate for a while, but, but they've got to get things together. And today's the day to make a decision of commitment, of unreserved commitment to move into that place where God's perfect plan can come uh, into existence and unfold in your life because God has a calling on each of you. And I'm going to talk oh, yeah. about that more in a minute, but there's three months here that he has given us uh, that we're to make this commitment now, and, and we're going to see changes in three months that we haven't uh, seen and that maybe we weren't even expecting before this point in time. And if God had told us what was going to happen uh, by April the 23rd, we might have laughed at him and thought, well, that, was, that would just be impossible for a change. But let me tell you, God is making changes and he's looking for people who will come to a higher level of a commitment, commitment. Oh, an unreserved cool. commitment. And Abraham and Sarah made that. Maybe they weren't ready for yet for the, uh, for the intimacy that they were going to have. But in three months, they would be ready. Her body was old. His body was old. Her, her womb had to be strengthened. But in three months, it was going to happen. They were going to come together and produce a seed, and his seed would be Isaac, and that seed would be Isaac, <clears throat> and they yeah. called him Isaac of laughter, and that was going to be a joy. That was going to be a joy when they could call uh, call that son Isaac, and no longer would be the uh, the child of a slave, but it was going to be Abraham and Sarah's child because they had come into union. Now they had come into agreement. Agreement is 
very oh, yeah, important. Yeah. This three month period uh, that they were given and they had to walk blameless. Now for years they could play around and they could be in and, out and be out as far as following God. But, but now it's time to get serious with God. Yeah. He said, walk, walk blameless before me. Uh, you, you may have served and, and gone off in a lot of different ways, but now it's serious. Get your act together. It's serious. Uh, we've got to come to a higher level of commitment. And I'm going to pray for you. And I pray that you uh, pray for me so that we can yes, all go yes. to a higher level together. And, and we're talking about how to build uh, for the future. And, and what I want you to know is that uh, uh, Paul, the Apostle Paul, <laughs> called himself a master builder. And do you know how he built? Uh, he, he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10, he said, I'm a master builder, and, and it's by the grace of God I'm building a foundation. So how do we build for the future? Will you build with grace? Hallelujah. You build with mm, grace. Mm. He said uh, uh, in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, I am what I, I am, am by the, grace, by the of grace of God. And it's grace that's laboring in me. It's not me doing these things, but it's his grace within me. So how do we build for the future? We build with grace. And, and he said, uh, again, back to 1 Corinthians 3, 10, I, I build the foundation, but other people build on it. But be sure you know how you're building. Don't build a different way. See, Paul was a master builder building, and we are uh, members of the household of God, and we're being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. prophets. I'm talking about the Ephesians 2.20, 2.20, that we are members of the household of God being built on the foundation of apostles and prophets with Jesus Christ himself being the chief corner stone. So how do you build for the future? That's grace. And of course, grace is called Jesus. Uh, I mean, the Holy Spirit is the spirit yeah, of grace. grace. So we've got to have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And I want to talk about a particular prayer that Paul prayed, and it's in Ephesians uh, chapter 1. Now, the thing about the Ephesians, that they are different than the Corinthians or the Galatians or other people, because these other congregations had all kinds of problems, all kinds of problems. But the Ephesians, if you look at the letter to the Ephesians that Paul wrote, he didn't write a letter to correct their problems. He wrote a letter to bring them to a higher level, a higher spiritual level. And that's exactly what we're doing here today. And in Ephesians chapter one, he makes this incredible statement. Uh, it, it's his prayer. But before I, before I go into the prayer, I want to say this, as I look back over my life, this is the most significant prayer in my life. Uh, I prayed it every day for a year in my life, every day for me. Uh, this is the most important prayer uh, in my life. And I continue to, to pray it over me and I pray it over other people. As a matter of fact, the Lord has told me to pray this over you. And so I have been praying this prayer over you. And I want to talk about the prayer. It's in, in Ephesians uh, chapter one. And he said, uh, wherefore also after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints. And so that's the way I see all of you that are here mm -hmm. tuning in today, mm -hmm. that you have faith in the Lord Jesus and you have love towards all the saints. Amen. But there's some other things that God wants to add to you. Now, of course, our faith can grow and increase. There's no limit on that. And our love can grow uh, without limit. And so it's always good to increase our faith and love. But but I believe what, what God has been telling me is that 
This is who you are. You have faith in the Lord Jesus and you have love unto all the saints, but there's some other things that he wants to add to it. And so this is my prayer for you that, man, this is the prayer that God has for you. You know, Jesus is interceding for you. And I, I believe that Paul is interceding for you. There are witnesses. There are, we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And I am praying this prayer for you that Amen. the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Hallelujah. the Father of glory, whoo, glory. So now, now we're moving past. I want to add uh, the Father then to your relationship. Really focus more on the Father in the days ahead. The Father, and he's called the Father of glory. He's, of course, of course, the father of our lord jesus christ but he's called the father of glory he's our father he's the father of lights he's the father of the saints and he's the father of glory so that must make us lights and saints not only are we salt and the light but we're also glory that's the way he sees you you're a glory he's the father of glory he's, a, he's your father he, he's not Hallelujah. the father of Hallelujah. your flesh but he's the father of your, your spirit, spirit. That's that is exciting. He's the Father of Glory, and the, and so, so this is one of the things we want to add in the days ahead is strengthen our relationship with the Holy Spirit and with the Father. So here we have the Father. That's part of the prayer that the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of Glory, would give unto you the Spirit. Oh, Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We're talking about the Spirit without measure, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, mm -hmm. that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope, hope of, of your calling. Of your ca oh, calling. There are three things I want to talk about now. We, we see that all three of the Godhead are important, and we need relationships with all three of them. It's going to open our eyes. And there's three things in particular we're praying for. In addition to our relationships with the Lord Jesus Christ and our Heavenly Father and uh, the Holy Spirit, we're, taught, we're praying about three things for you. And that is, you know your calling, you know your inheritance, and you know the power. Uh, that you might know what is the hope of your calling, what is the exceeding greatness of his power. power. It's the same power that raised uh, Jesus Christ from the grave. And so there are three things here that you need. You need to know your calling and you need to know an inheritance, the inheritance that you have and receive the inheritance and the power. See, you're going to have to have the power in order uh, to receive the inheritance. And you're going to have to have the power and the inheritance to fulfill the calling. Oh, that's good, All of these work together. And this is the prayer. This is the prayer that God has told me to pray for you, and I pray for it. I pray for this prayer over you that uh, you might know what is the hope of his calling, what is the exceeding, uh, and, and what the uh, riches of his gl uh, glory, of his inheritance, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power. Uh, the glory to God, it's the same power that raised Christ from the dead. This is the power that works in you. And when we've got to have that power, not only realizing it's within you but have it activated it's the uh, it's the amount of the energy of that power working in you that's going to change things so we're at a point and, and today's the day to make the commitment an unreserved commitment uh, so that you'll know what is your calling and you'll have and receive the inheritance that God has for you and that you'll have the power operating in your life. And all three of those are going to work together. You will never fulfill your calling if you don't receive your inheritance. Yeah. It's just going to take the inheritance in order for you to have what you need to fulfill your calling. And you'll never receive your inheritance without a full relationship with the Holy Spirit overflowing in his power and in his presence so that you can bring forth your inheritance and fulfill your calling. It's all about, you've got to have the power and it comes from the relationships with Jesus Christ, the father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's oh, going to open your eyes. The reason I say this is the most important Shut prayer up. in my life. And like I said, I prayed it over my life every day for a year. 
every day for a year and I continue to pray it, but I pray it over other people. And, and see, it's through that that my eyes became enlightened to what my calling was. I could easily have just sat somewhere in a pew for the rest of my life and never fulfilled my calling, never walked in it, never started it. But when I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and started praying this prayer, that my, the eyes of my understanding might be enlightened, that I might know what is the hope of my calling and, and the riches of his inheritance and the, and the exceeding greatness of his power, my life began to change. And it will for you too. And I'm praying it over you but we need to do it in agreement. You, you, I'm asking you to be in agreement. Today's the day to make the commitment. Like Abraham, God said, this is three months of important time. He said it to Abraham. He said in a year, in a year, you're going to bring forth a son. But there's got to be that three-month preparation period. There's got to be that three-month period. So where things start coming together. Then, then A, and then Sarah carried that pregnancy for nine months, but that three months was critical. They had to come together. They had to be intimate in that period. And, and, and it wasn't about the first two and a half months, let me tell you. It was on that third month, they had to have intimacy. Her womb had to be strengthened at that time to carry seed. And, and so that's where we are. That's where you are in your life. That's where I am in my life. This is a critical three months. From January the 23rd to April the 23rd, we need to walk blameless before the Lord. Oh, it's, it's, hallelujah, hallelujah. Maybe we hadn't been accountable to, to walk blameless, but I tell you, he's calling us yes. to be accountable to him. And those that are called uh, are, have a higher level of accountability. And when you know you're calling, you'll know that you have a higher level of accountability than a lot of the uh, wishy-washy uh, milk toast type Christians that are out there doing their own thing and serving when they want to and serving as long as they want to. But God is calling us to a higher level. And that's what it is today. He's calling us to a higher level, a higher standard. You know, loyalty, uh, it says if you're faithful in a little, you'll be faithful in much. And if yes, you're faithful yes. in another man's ministry, you'll be faithful in your own ministry. So faithfulness is important. And that's, that's like loyalty. Uh, uh, it says, if you have received the gift of the Holy Spirit, then minister the same one to another. First Peter uh, 4.10 as a good steward of the manifold grace of God, okay, of the grace of God, and, and so we're to be, but 1 Corinthians 4, 2 says that it's required of stewards that they be faithful, mm -hmm. so stewards mm -hmm. have to be faithful, and that's like loyalty, but, but see Psalm um, 37, 5 says, commit your way to the mm -hmm. Lord, and he will bring it to pass, and um, Proverbs 16.3 says, uh, commit your works to the Lord and he will establish your thoughts and establish your plan. So he, he's calling us to go come to a higher level, to a level not just of loyalty, but a level of commitment, instant commitment and unreserved commitment. Once we a, 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 an immediate response. He's, he's looking for an immediate response. See, Abraham made an immediate response that same day. He had a lot of, man, of men and boys in his uh, family and in his family group that day, but he made an immediate response when God appeared to him and said, in one year, you will have a son. And he made he didn't wait three months to make a commitment. He made an immediate response and, and he circumcised all of the males and he himself was circumcised. Ishmael was circumcised. I'm, I'm referring to Genesis 17. He was, Abraham was <laughs> circumcised that same day. He made a an immediate response and an unreserved commitment. Boy, you cut away the flesh and, and 
And what's going to be left is the spirit. Amen. Amen. And with us today, of course, our flesh has been crucified. If we're in Christ Jesus, then our flesh has been crucified. And it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that I live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. I, I want you to mark this day at, mark this day down. This is January the 23rd. And over the next three months, they're critical. They're critical in your life to fulfill your calling, to, to receive your inheritance, to walk in the very power of God, the same power that he used to raise Jesus from the dead. Share it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whew. I don't know about you, but I'm, uh, I'm shaking <laughs> just to, to, to hear that, that um, he's wanting to, to do great things with us. And in the next three months, it's going to be very, very important uh, for us to uh, get our act together and, and to get our thoughts about him and, and uh, make sure that, that we're accountable. And that we are walking uh, before him uh, blameless. And uh, I mean, that's a lot to take in. Um, in 30 minutes time, he has poured out his spirit uh, upon all of us. And uh, I know that he's got things for you, each one of you to do. And you are all part of an apostolic ministry apostolic ministry what does that mean it means that you're sent ones you're sent ones jean isabel was sent she was sent to honduras she was sent to roatan and and she was a sent one that makes this ministry apostolic and that means that it's built on the apostles and the prophets like like Freddie said, Paul was a master builder and he built on sound foundation. And so as you begin to build uh, for the future, and as I begin to build for the future, as we do, then we must build um, on that, that sound foundation of, of what has been said in the word of God and also uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit and so right now, I just, I, I sense that each one of you, uh, God is taking you today to a higher level with him, a higher level of commitment, but also a higher level of revelation of, of who he is and what he wants you to do. Um, the, the enemy would like to try to come and, 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 and make some of us feel uh, overwhelmed uh, by what needs to be done and what the Lord wants us to do. But I come against that spirit of being overwhelmed and I say, let it be gone right now in the name of Jesus and let your heart be established and steadfast on the word of God. Uh, because with the Lord, all things are possible. And, and, with man, it's impossible, but with God, it is possible. And so uh, we have to let him do what he wants to do with us each day uh, as we present ourselves a vessel, a living sacrifice unto him um, and that we're, we're walking in holiness, we're walking in, in righteousness, and we're walking by faith. Uh, and not by sight. And if we look around us at the things that the Lord wants us to do, uh, you know, we we can, you know, get like Peter and 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 um, and want to get back in the boat. Uh, but the Lord says, "No, I want you to walk by faith, and I'm going to help you." And so the Lord is extending His hand to each one of you that's listening. Uh, to us today and and listening to the Lord today. Um, so I'd like to open it up and see what what the Lord is speaking to you right now. Well, has he spoken to you this afternoon and what are you going to do about it? 
Uh, so I'm going to open it up. Uh, just uh, unmute yourself if you'd like to say something. This is a wonderful group today. Wonderful group. Cheney, I was praying for you this morning. <laughs> no. You know, I said, I, I want to see Shaney's face. Thank you, Sister Sherry. Love you. God I bless love you. you. I love you. Happy to be here again. <laughs> yes, yes, we're glad. We're very glad. We're blessed by the teaching because we still need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and and I'm truly blessed this afternoon being here and receiving all of this because I know the need is great in the spirit, in the spirit. Amen. Amen. Great in the spirit. There's much to do. There's much to do for y'all there. There's much to do for us here. Uh, there's much work for the kingdom to do. Yes. Kingdom. Amen. Okay. Who else has something they want to say? Hello. Yes. Yes. Go. 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 Um. Since the share started, I feel like the Holy Spirit's been talking to me. Okay. And he's been saying he needed new wine skins. Yes. Not old wine skins. Amen. And <laughs> that prayer that. me to pray that over my life and over the church okay. amen amen so new wine what skins do, what do i receive from this teaching today i Thank received you. a lot of confirmation and i also receive you know that encouragement that we have to try to do it god's 100 percent yeah, you know, we have to forget about ourselves and really let the word of God be the centerpiece in yeah. every decision, every every everything that we face on a daily basis. We need to think: What would God want me to do? How would He want me to do it? You know, and when would He want me to do it? Yeah. So I'm asking to help me to be a new wineskins because. Things are going to be different. At least he says, what I felt like he said to me was, he says, I don't need old wineskins that, you know, that are closed in by old ideas, old way of doing stuff, because I'm about to do new things. And it only new wineskins will yeah. be able to flow with me and not disturb the spirit and the anointing in what I want to do from this time onward. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You for your beautiful. And God bless. Hallelujah. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, Marlene, that's beautiful. And, and we're in agreement with that 100%. Uh, that's exactly right. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, okay. Blessing. Yes. Yes. Does someone else have something they want to say? I'm in a public place, so I can't say too much. <laughs> but no more wishy washiness. <laughs> I mean, I've taken that word very serious. And also, we have to mark this day. Yes. January 23rd. Mark yes. this day. Yes. yes. For change. Yes. Amen. 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 It's beautiful. That's beautiful. And that that is that's correct. And that's that's right for all of us that we mark this day and um, that we get um serious with the Lord. Yeah, I had no idea. I would have never ever thought that Abraham was wishy washy. <laughs> 60 years. 
Yeah. And this is the first time that I've heard that. But I know, I believe you, Brother Fred, I believe you. I know that it, after you explained it, I realized that it is true. Yes. It is true. And, but he straightened up his act and yes. he got serious. I mean, yes, I, I mean, mean. I mean. I mean. <laughs> that is that is so true that is so true you know i'm 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 seeing you uh all of you in god's vineyard i'm seeing you in god's vineyard and you're and you're out picking the grapes and the, the wine has not been um uh produced yet but you are you are out in the vineyard and you're and you're getting the the grapes and you're bringing them in uh, so that you can uh, crush them and make the new wine that God that God wants. And uh, and so uh, you are you're a very important group of people. Uh, you're important to us because we love you. You're our family, but also you're important in the kingdom plan. What God is planning uh, for Honduras, what God is planning uh, for you and your family, for what God is planning there uh, is you are uh, very critical to his plan. And, you know, it's uh, this, this ministry uh, as I look at all of you, your faces, and and I I hear you today. Uh, I hear your hearts uh, crying out to the Lord, saying, "You know, here I am. Uh, use me." And you know, just like uh, Jeremiah. And so, uh, as you cry out to the Lord, then He will use you, and and He will multiply. Uh, multiply your efforts. He says, be fruitful and multiply. And I believe that that's what's going to happen uh, in the days ahead is that you're going to see uh, that your fruit is being multiplied. And so, and every part is important. Um, if you sing, it's important. If you pray, it's important. If you preach, it's important. Every, every part of God's plan is is important and so you know as we build for the future uh then uh, you know let's remember those three things tell us the three things again the calling the, the calling. inheritance and the power the calling know what inheritance. you're supposed to be doing inheritance, inheritance. the yeah. inheritance and the power the power and the power yes yes, <laughs> yes. hallelujah we've got the power in the name of jesus we've got the power in the name in of the lord, lord. the satan is he cannot, he cannot be, be defeated. He the power, power in, in the, the name, name of the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Lord. Someone else have, have a comment they want to make. Uh, I love um I love there where um we need to construct for the future. Yes, yes. I and I love um, it's it's a preparation, and I love the part where Abraham says, uh, it, where God tell him it's you need to circumcise, finish with the flesh, because when we finish with the flesh, then the spirit takes over. Yes. Amen. And so I do love that part, and um, I know God is speaking to us. I know it's for this time, because it's time for the manifestation. Of the yes. Spirit yes. In this world. Yes. Because yes. only that, only that brings changes. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. I love, I love that word. That word, and um, I love too 
prepare your womb, the preparation of them getting ready, their womb, because yes. God is about to birth. birth Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you all. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's great treasure that you guys are pouring into our spirit. And I, I trust that you guys will hear of what God is doing to us. Yes, I mean. I mean. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The I pray for, for those that will be making some decisions this week uh, that everyone will be on the same page and in agreement with what God wants, not what uh man wants but what god wants and that's that's what uh we're praying and we're praying in agreement with you and it says if any two shall agree uh about any situation it shall be done by the father which is in heaven uh in the name of jesus i come against any hindering uh forces any uh, thoughts that are not uh, from the Spirit of God. I come against those in Jesus' name, and I say they will not be able to manifest themselves. Uh, and that, yes, and that God's thinking uh, will rule and reign uh, yeah. in yeah. in in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um. Nikki, I have a, a word from the Lord for you, and, and, and the Lord would say uh, that, that your beauty, the beauty that is on the inside of you, uh, that he has placed there, and he said there have been times when, when you have uh, mm -hmm. not spoken, but the Lord is, is wanting to speak through you, and so right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, I touch your lips with cold. I touch your lips right now in the spirit realm, in the name of Jesus. And I say that you have uh, the words of the Lord, that you have uh, uh, lips to praise him and that uh, his praises shall continually be upon your lips. And, and that when the Lord gives you something to say, then you say it because there are people that are waiting they have ears to hear what the Spirit would say unto them. Uh, I stir up that gift of prophecy uh, that's on the inside of you in Jesus' name, that you will have visions and dreams, and you will know uh, what the Lord is saying to his church. Uh, and so you go forth with boldness right now. I, I impart and transfer the boldness and the... the uh, the energy of God uh, that he has placed um, by his spirit uh, within me, uh, I, I transfer it to you right now in the name of Jesus. Thank Do you Lord. receive it? Yes, ma'am, I receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of Jesus forever. Lord, we just praise you right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, intercessors, I, I ask you to, uh, to uh, I know um, Florence has, has said that, that y'all have been praying for the last three weeks and, and, um, and the Lord sees those prayers. He hears those prayers. Every one of our prayers, uh, he does not forget. He hears them. He holds on to them. He puts them in a bottle, right? He puts them in a bottle. Hallelujah. And so your prayers are, are valuable. And this is the time to pray. This is the time uh, to say, Lord, uh, we present ourselves to you uh, each and every day. And so I do believe that this was a message that was right on target. Hallelujah. I don't know about, you know, I, I know. Uh, it's for you, it's for me, uh, because 
God is is moving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is moving. He is moving in each one of us. Praise the name of Jesus. Okay, we've Sharon, got a few. Yes, Micah. I just I just feel that the Lord said it's time to be about my father's business. Yes. Whoa. Um, that it's as you know, as Brother Fred said, that it's no more time to be wishy-washy. Um, that you know, that God has plans. God has things that He wants to do. Yes. Amen. That we need to be willing, open, and available to Him. Yes. Whenever the time, the times, you know, when yes. when 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 we have to move. And he knows, and through the spirit that is within us, the Holy Spirit that knows all things. Yes. And when he is speaking, that's why I said last week, I think it was, that I'm really praying that I can be able to, to hear the spirit when he speaks. Yes. Amen. And, Amen. and throughout what Brother Fred was saying today, I guess, you know, it, it's time to be about my father's business. And that's good. I just pray that the Lord would just to speak to me and, and and I guess to everyone here yeah. um and, and that we would be open and hear his voice when he does speak amen Hallelujah. amen yeah. yes we agree with that 